I think initially it's, it's very much a shock. I don't think people realize the volume or the extent that wildlife and plants are used in trade. People will buy just about anything. We'll have crocodile purses or alligator skin boots, traditional medicines, hunting trophies. If you can imagine it, it's probably here in some form or another. I've been with the repository for 18 years. So, uh, you know, I've seen things that I, unless you work here, you would never expect to see. So now we are entering the warehouse portion of the repository. Um, this is where we store all the confiscated and wildlife property that we receive. This bin here actually is representative of the ivory that was crushed here at the repository in November of 2013. We essentially crushed a 25-year stockpile of confiscated elephant ivory to show a support and send a message that we are serious about conserving elephants and eliminating the demand for elephant ivory and elephant ivory products. You never know how to feel here when you look at where this stuff came from, that it was actually derived from living animals and plants. It is a little, it's a little bit depressing, I'll be honest. So this aisle represents our collection of spotted cats, um, tigers here. And one item that I, I like to point out is this very small tiger mount that you see. Um, this particular animal was actually taken while it was still inside the mother. So this tiger, this young tiger here, um, never even had the opportunity or a chance at life. And so this to me represents the loss of multiple generations with the loss of just this one little tiger here. Greed really does drive this business. When I, when I talk about greed, it's about having something that is so unique or unusual that your neighbor doesn't have one or any, no one else has that or very few people have that. When someone views a, a leopard skin coat, for example, when you point out to that person that that single garment required 15 to 20 animals to make a single garment, it really does hit home. Many times when I open a box and I see either the diversity or on the other side of that, you'll just see two or three hundred pairs of shoes in a single shipment. A thought that goes through my mind often is how can there be anything left living when you see the amount of, of trade going on? Well, of course, we have the Wildlife Property Repository and the Eagle Repository. We get eagles uh, from all over the United States. Many years ago, uh, the uh, then director of the U.S. and Wildlife Service directed all of the uh, services agencies to send any dead eagles here to the repository. Also, in 1994, there was a presidential memorandum that went out uh, uh, ordering all um, federal um, agencies that uh, managed lands. Any eagles that were found on their uh, uh, lands were also to be shipped here. Oh. They're also protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. You can't uh, possess them, uh, you can't pick them up, you can't pick up feathers, you can't, can't tamper with their nests. Federal law protects the eagles, but uh, they wanted to give Native Americans a way that they could um, exercise their constitutional right of religious freedom. And so the repository came about to 
uh, facilitate that and give them a, a legal way to obtain the birds. We look them over from head to toe uh, in order to determine what parts of them are damaged and uh, whether or not they're usable. We are a salvage facility, so many of those birds come in in very poor condition. We get, we've been averaging about 23, 2400 eagles a year. From those 23, 2400 eagles, we're normally able to fill about four or 5,000 requests a year. Maybe about 12 to 1300 of those would be requests for whole birds, and then the rest would be a loose feather orders. You see so many of them, work with so many of them, you kind of realize at times you're kind of taking it for granted that most Americans will never see them up this close or this, this much. And what's routine to me is kind of, uh, kind of amazing and unbelievable to somebody else. It feels good to know that you're doing something that uh, means a lot to someone. At times when, you, when you've got a Native American applicant on the phone and you can tell they're very touched by what you're doing, it, it makes it special. A number of years ago it was taken off the endangered species list uh, because it's recovered so well. So hopefully what we do here helps encourage people to go about getting an eagle the right way and uh, help the eagles to thrive and survive.